Welcome back to lesson number 16. Today I want to talk about different ways of sharpening, not technique like we showed in the first videos for each of the individual tools, but I want to talk about three basic kinds of systems that are on the market. So you can choose the one that seems most appropriate for you. You've seen all this because we have them in all the videos where we talked about how to sharpen the roughing gouge, the skew, and so on. So this is one type. This is a kind of grinder that creates a hollow grind bevel on our tool. I'm going to show you another system that also creates a hollow grind, but a much flatter one. And then I'm going to show you a third system that actually gives you a flat bevel for your tool. All three are widely used in our particular area among our students. This is the system most frequently used. I'm going to show you another version of it, one from my home, which has a different grinder and required a little bit different setup. So let's move over to the other side of the room and let me show you uh, some of the tools and accessories and take you through these various different steps. So I'm going to go over to the other side of the room. I'll join you over there. I've stepped over to the table on the other side of the room and I'm going to walk you through some of the various sharpening techniques. But before I get to the powered units, I want to remind you, as we have seen in all the other videos, about using these diamond cards, which I always keep in my pocket. There's other options. This one, it's the same 600 grit, easy to fold up, works the same way. You might try that. This I liked a lot. This is a set of honing stones from Henry Taylor. There's a large one and a small one. Both edges are radius on both of these. That allows you to be able to get inside the flute. Now that one doesn't fit, but the smaller one does. And that gives me a chance to be able to hone the inside of this. So I can do the bevel, and if you like honing the flute of your tools, one of these two will fit whatever size gouge you have. Alan Lacer's come up with one that's a DMT stone, 600 grit, but it also has the radius edges. And so Henry Taylor's with real stone, Alan Lacer with a diamond stone. This one doesn't fit this tool, but the other edge does. So if you ever want to hone the flute, those work. Those are options for carrying around. Many times I've gone and done demonstrations in places where a sharpening system was not available. Relying on these things was absolutely necessary for me to continue, or carry a lot of tools, that's the other thing. On our grinders at school, we do have aluminum oxide wheels, similar to this one. This is a Norton 3X brand. And I want to point out a few features about stones in general, whether it's from a woodworking supplier, I'll show you one I bought from a uh, machine tool supply company, similar to the ones we use and much less expensive. It says right here, this is eight times one times one. It's an eight inch stone. It's one inch thick. It has a one inch bore. Yeah, it's got all these little plastic inserts in here. It'll allow you to come all the way down to a five eighths motor arbor, which most of these grinders have. It also says 3X46-K. 3X, that's the brand. 46 is the grit. This is a very coarse wheel. K, that's the hardness of the surface, the centering material to put this together. If you go to my website, you'll find two handouts. One, this is a page out of, it talks a little bit about different hardnesses and different color coatings for these uh, stones and you can look that up it's right on the website also we do a class on tool sharpening from time to time and the handout for that all the materials are also there so this is already on the website when you see this video the link will be right below it and you can go right to these devices on that page we don't always need to buy expensive stones this is one I bought. CGW is a Norton industrial brand. Let's see if I get this box open. This is the way they come. 
Inside here's those same plastic inserts. One of them will fit the shaft of your motor. The first one probably pops out because that's half inch. The next one's three quarters, which fits most standard motors. It looks perfect. However, once you mount it on your grinder, these plastic pieces will deform to some extent, causing just a little eccentricity as you tighten it down. So the very first thing you do is get out your truing stone and make this thing run smooth to your grinder. And that has to be done. First thing when you mount a stone, I turn the grinder on and I leave the room. I want to let it run up for a while without me around in case something is bad happening with the stone. The other thing you can always do, if you ring it like that, you should get a bell sound, bell tone, meaning that this is a solid piece of material. If it goes thunk, most likely there's a small crack, in which case what I'd do is take that back to the dealer and ask for a replacement. Don't even go near the grinder with it. Just get rid of it. It should have that bell sound when you ring it. Now, I'm going to go on to the next grinder here and start showing you the three basic types of systems. The first one, like we've seen in all the sharpening, but I'm going to come over here to uh, a larger version of what we generally use in the classroom and talk to you about CBN wheels. I've stepped over to the first of three workstations I want to describe to you, and in this one I'm going to cover some of the adjustability that all three of the systems have in common. This is mine from home. It's a one horse motor instead of the, the half horse that we have here at the classroom. As a result, when I turn this on, it's up to speed much, much more rapidly. And um, consider if you're going to have CBN wheels, which are fairly heavy, that you might want to consider a larger grinding motor. I mentioned CBN. On my system here at home, I have two CBN wheels. On the left is an 80 grit with a platform which I use to sharpen broader, thicker tools like scrapers. On the right is a 180 grit wheel which I use to sharpen all of my gouges. This is an inch and a half wide. This is narrower and it has the additional features of these edges being rolled over. It allows me to do other kinds of sharpening uh, because of that rolled edge. There's a lot of variations in these different wheels. 80, 180, and on up in higher and higher grits. Uh, if you're a carver or need something that's super, super sharp, you might want to consider even a higher grit. For us wood turners, if I can repeat my settings, 180 is fine for bringing an edge back to my tool very, very rapidly. And because of that, I never adjust these settings. When I'm getting ready to sharpen this tool, for instance, I put it into the fixture. This is labeled bowl, or deep fluted gouge. I have another one labeled spindle, or shallow fluted gouge. And they're set differently. But I never change the length of this arm. So this goes through here. Two inches is the arbitrary setting I have. So everything is repeatable, and all I have to do is put it into the fixture and do the sharpening. So I have two fixtures, one for each. There's a third brand from a company in Australia called Woodfast. I can have exactly the same settings. In fact, I can use exactly the same setup with their little red fixture. The difference is, this is two series of V's that come together like this. It allows me to sharpen the smallest possible tool I own. And because this distance here is shorter than on the one-way fixture, uh, I can sharpen them even after they get too short to fit that fixture. So it gives me some other options. Now here's the point I want to make about all these fixtures and all these settings. This distance from the face of the wheel is adjustable. The angle as it approaches the wheel is adjustable. The projection of the tool through the fixture is adjustable. So I have three sets of variables that affect sharpening any of these tools. And this applies to all of the systems I'm going to show you. So I'm spending the time here, and then I'll show you how they are on the other systems also. So the farther this projects through here, 
the bigger the radius of the tip will be on the tool. If I put this tool in here, well, it doesn't fit. Wrong one. Spindle. Bolt. Deep flute. If I change this angle, I'm going to change the angle on the bevel of the tool. If I change this projection, this distance from the surface of the wheel, I'm going to change the angle on the side. So I set this angle for what I want. Then I set this length for what I want. And because these interact with each other, I go back and reset or readjust here. It's typically here, here, and then back. At home and at school, these settings stay. At school, we actually put a screw through the side of this bracket so it won't move and it won't accidentally get readjusted to a different setting. So the three interact. Radius of the tip, length of the bevel, length of the side grind. Tip, bevel, side grind. Okay, this is the most frequently used system in our part of the country, and at least among our students. Maybe it's because we've encouraged them this way. It's one of the least expensive options that you could go with, other than hand sharpening. So let's go to the Tormac system, which has all the same settings, but it has some additional features. We'll step over to the next sharpening system. I've stepped over to the next system, which is called the Tormac. And there are several other less expensive versions of this on the market from other brands. But again, it has the same three settings. For instance, distance from the stone is how far this bar is moved in and out. Angle is how much this is cocked back and forth. Projection, how much distance it's moved through the fitting. They have a device that sits on this bar against the wheel that sets that distance to one of two different settings, simplifying your choices between A and B. They have another device that allows you to set this projection to one of several different lengths. For me, I have simply made up a little fixture. This one for the Ellsworth style um, swept back wing bowl gouge. I know the distance is this. I know the projection is 75 millimeters, that's this distance here. And so I can set that, same as on the other system. This slides onto the bar and sharpening is done like this. The difference is, this is a slow speed grinder. We have a wheel here that's 250 uh, mesh grit. And it's a water bath, which means, and it's also turning away from the tip of the tool. So if I sharpen the side of this thing, one side, other side, and then across the tip, I get it done just that fast. And it's razor sharp. Tarmac is an interesting company. You can sharpen anything on this, from axes to your kitchen knives to the most complex looking carving tool there is. They have a fixture for everything. It'll slide on this bar or position otherwise. So Tarmac is a very versatile system. I have simply shown you the, one of the more complex ones, which is used for sharpening the deep fluted gouge like this. Do I want to do spindle gouges? Yes, I would set this to maybe a different number here. I might set this projection to a different length here. I can, might even set this projection to a different length. Tormac system has markings for all those settings, where the system I've showed you originally, it's fairly manual. 
Here, everything can be set to the number, making it a lot simpler to refine earlier settings. Pretty easy to use. A couple of things, water bath makes this really cool. There's no dust, there's no heating. And being 600 grit, this thing grinds really, really nice. I can actually change the grit of the stone from being coarse to fine by simply stroking this. Okay, I can go to 1,000 grit by simply changing the grit on this wheel. Same ideas. Let me show you a third system. And again, the same things. This gives you a hollow grind also, but a curve like this rather than a curve off the 8-inch wheel like this. So let me show you a third system that's frequently in use, one that gives you no curvature, a nice flat bevel. And that's the Sorby system, which is right next here. Here's the last of the three basic types of systems, and this is a flat sanding belt type system. It has a lot of interchangeable belts. We have a 180 built on here now. And it has a platform which can be used with a number of different accessories for getting different angles. For, sorry about that. For instance, if I wanted to sharpen my spindle roughing gouge, this would do that. If I want to do a bolt gouge, this platform is removable. Excuse the long threads. I have a fixture that looks very much like the one off of the tarmac. Projection through, settable to different lengths, and there is a device that slides onto this rod. The tool goes through here, so the rotational angle is set. Is it adjustable? Absolutely. I can move this collar up and down, which allows this tool to change lengths. So sharpening, put this about in the center. Same motion as we had with the tarmac. Here, around to there. Side. Precisely the same process as on the other one. And we can adjust this for different lengths. We can reset for different angles. So I have the adjustable tip angle. I have the adjustable bevel angle. And by picking the correct hole here, I have a range of adjustments for the side angle. Now, why would you prefer one of these systems over the other? One of several reasons. One, which one feels easiest for you to use? Uh, I have some people in our staff who prefer this one over the system I use at home because they feel they reproduce their settings easier. And that this device makes it simple. It limits the choices, but it provides things that are easily done. In talking to a number of professional turners about whether flat, slight hollow grind or maximum hollow grind, 8 inch, uh, 12 inch flat, makes a difference in rubbing the bevel in our cuts. Most professionals find that there is no difference. The amount of difference in curvature doesn't affect the ability of the tool to cut. So I wanted to show you the three different options. What I think you need to do is go to your woodworking dealer, try them out, decide which one works best for you, and if they don't have them at the dealer, go find a friend who does. Go try their system out and see whether it works for you best. I pick the one I like. Uh, one of my teaching assistants picks the ones that she liked, and I want to thank her for the loan of the equipment for this uh, demonstration. And one of my other students absolutely prefers the Tarmac system because of its flexibility. So the choice is yours. I'd like you to go to the website, Look at the handouts that I have there, it's right behind this video. 
There's also a really nice long article by Reed Gray, which I've also posted there, which is very detailed on the background of CBN wheels, more than you probably want to know, but it's a useful reference document. It's also there for you to refer to. So thank you for watching this lesson. And the next two lessons that we're coming up with will be on vacuum chucking. First one on making and setting up the hardware. What's a vacuum chuck system look like? The second part of the lesson will be making your own custom vacuum chucks. We'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.